idea that somehow the Geneva Convention covers every conflict is simply not the law. And so, it, so if it were me, intended to be the law, the Senate up. hasn't said so. Senator, your time, time is up. Is let up. Me, so if I understand you correctly, you're saying in the war against terror, which is non-state asymmetric warfare, as far as the administration is concerned, the Geneva Conventions do not apply. Well, I am saying that there are a variety of laws that govern whether or not the conduct of the United States as it relates to individuals we detain in time of war. Some of those laws are, some of those relationships are governed by Geneva, but the Uniform Code of Military Justice, it, it's everywhere. And the torture statutes applies to a variety of circumstances. When the, when the Congress enacted the torture, torture statute, it enacted a law that said it applied everywhere outside the United States. But when the con Congress defined the United States, it's not simple. Because when the Congress de defined the United States in the torture statute, it said the United States shall include special maritime and territorial jurisdictions which means that the United States just doesn't include our 50 states. It's some, it'll sometimes include military bases. It'll sometimes include consular offices. It'll sometimes include the residences or uh, embassy offices. And when the Congress of the United States makes these definitions, that's what I have to live by. Uh, it seems a little bit of an anomaly to me that on the one hand, there would be those who would accuse me of defining the law. And on the other hand, individuals who would protest the fact that I had lived by the congressional definition of the law. When I provide to the President of the United States or members of the executive branch an assessment of what the law is, I have to go and read the law. And when there are technical definitions placed in the law by the United States Congress, I am sworn on my oath to represent the law as to what it is, not whether as a person, whether in my view, this would be one way or another. And it's a complex are arena with the, with the military extraterritorial, ter territorial, I can't even pronounce it, Military Extraterritorial okay. Jurisdiction Act with the uh, Special Maritime uh, Jurisdiction, uh, Territory and Jurisdiction Responsibilities with the Uniform Code of Military Justice with the various conventions, both Geneva Conventions and the Anti-Torture Conventions, and they both have these carve-outs. We haven't gotten to the technical part of defining the United States, which includes territory outside the United States for these purposes, because then the Congress has come in and said that if you look at Part 9 that defines the military or the special maritime and territorial jurisdiction, it takes some people out. So for some people, the United States is defined by one set of limits. For other people, it's defined by another. All I'm saying is that when I render advice to the executive branch, which I seek to do, and the professionals of my department who know this much better than I do, they have to live by those definitions. And we cannot recreate them in what would, it, it, you know, just to say it's common sense to read this provision. That means it's everywhere. Well, the Geneva Convention doesn't apply everywhere by its own terms and by the terms embraced by the Congress in ratification. And I have to reflect that in my advice. I simply Senator, do. your time is up. Senator Craig.